Last time on the Kaiju Apostle Podcast. Ebra effing slaps. There's like there's like three things that have to happen for me to have a complete podcast. It's Minya, shipping, and mentioning Godzilla 98. So you're going to deny me the pleasure of seeing it. But the question is, if J.J. Abrams directed the rise of Godzilla, who would be Minya's mom? I know what the Rule 34 people would say. Oh, no. (laughs) Wait, did I just accidentally ask our listeners to chip? (laughs) You did. Welcome back to the Kaiju Apostle podcast, a deep dive into Toho's rich history of monster films and discovering what lies beneath the surface. I'm David. I'm Chris. And joining us is the mastermind of the Monsters vs. Men podcast, Eric Neely. How you doing, Eric? Oh, uh, I was I thought you were setting me up to be the mastermind for a second. <laughs> well, technically you are though, but uh joining us is Alex. How are you doing, Alex? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. I'm very yeah. excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Um it's a real honor for you to be with us today. <laughs> <laughs> Please bow for me, please. <laughs> That'll really help our audio listeners. Yeah. This experience was bowing. Yeah. Uh, listeners, they're still bowing. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, normally we ask, you know, I, it bothers me when I listen to podcasts. I'm like, hey, how are you doing talking to the guest? Because, you know, they've been talking for 20, 30 minutes beforehand. But yes. we actually haven't been because we have kids. So we're trying to keep this pretty concise. So tell us, how are you doing, Alex? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing great. It's a, you know, it's a beautiful Sunday. There's a small child. I can hear her footsteps right above me. So <laughs> we're playing pretty fast and loose with it right now. But, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm in lockdown because I might have COVID. So, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. oh, yeah. I, fi- I found out Monday, but, uh, well, the little one has it or might have it. So, if she has it, we all have it. So, we'll see. Good. But, so, you know, I don't have pants on for four or five days left. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. But I'm doing good. Oh, man. So, for those who aren't familiar with you or your podcast, because um, you've like got COVID. multiple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So back in December, COVID's <laughs> brewing in China. <laughs> oh, Is that not man. it? That's not what you want to talk me, want me to talk no. about? Oh. No. <laughs> so that's that's a uh, tea cap after dark. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, we, we've got I'm on two podcasts. I'm on Monsters vs. Men, which some of your listeners might know us from and we just wrapped up Godzilla. We're going through Gamera, which is an interesting experience. Uh, I'm actually having more fun with it as we get further along. Uh, but the the whole Godzilla series was a nice welcome into the community. It was fun to like talk to everybody about these movies that really, some of them caught me off guard. I was surprised mm-hmm. at how much I liked some of them. And I know you, you all haven't gotten All Monsters Attack yet, but... It's a, it's not as bad as I make it out to be on the internet. I just I just like to start the pot because it's fun. Oh, it's, and... it's amazing. We don't stir the pot on this podcast. <laughs> oh, I, I know you only conform to normal opinions. <laughs> yeah, and you just say what people want you to hear. But but you know I'm also the type of person that really likes some of the more concerned bad movies. And I, I dragged Eric along on that podcast and. He's gotten more into the movies probably than, well, not more than me, but almost as much as me. I mean, he's he's watching Ultraman every night, just like I am now. So mm. he, he's all in. This film snob is, he's quickly becoming a nerd. Um, and then I'm also on the 13th Floor podcast with my wife, uh, Cece, and our other co-host, James. And we just talk about conspiracy theories, uh, ghosts, ghost stories, alien stories, all kinds of things that supernatural or something like flat earth theory or our one bad review was because I could not help but bash flat earth theory nonstop. <laughs> is that what the review is about? Yeah. Oh, I remember I seeing that. They're yeah. like, yeah, I listen to more episodes. Alex, a jerk. <laughs> of course, that's what they're, you're making fun of. That's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I, I play the skeptic on that. And so I'm, I'm skeptical of everything. So we just go through that and it, it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. It's good to have said. I have fans all over the globe. It'll make up for my one star. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mean all over all over the plane, right? All over it's the not plane. a globe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and inside the earth as well. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Mole people. Yeah. But, it's you nice know, I, I did want to call you out real quick, David. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, I believe shoot. it was two episodes ago. You you misquoted me. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy about it. Okay. Let's, let's, let's just get this out of yeah. the way. Yeah, I believe you said that the worst thing that you said that I said the worst thing a movie can do is not be fun. Mm-hmm. I never said that. <laughs> I okay. said the worst thing a movie can do is be boring. <laughs> Which is funny because you'd think there's not a difference, but there absolutely is. There absolutely right. is. Yes. <laughs> but, but, you know, I knew what you meant, mm-hmm. but you slandered me in public. So, ouch. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm surprised you didn't quote tweet me over that one. No, uh, I'm not that petty. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. So, so I sent Chris over a couple suggestions to listen to before uh, we did today's episode. Were you able to listen to any of those, Chris? I listened to a part parts of a few. Okay, just to get a little more of a sampling. So to anyone that has not listened to your podcast, I know my favorite episode so far has been the Godzilla 1998 one, because having your wives on there has been amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. It's the only way to force them to watch something they don't want to watch. Yeah. (laughs) So so for people who haven't listened to your show, but might be familiar with the the genre, what what episodes would you recommend? Oh, uh, you know, like you said, 98 is really good. Uh, we've got a lot of good responses of people liking to hear our wives on that one. Mm-hmm. And I wish we could bring them on more, but I don't know how much we could twist their arm. They're, it, might, <laughs> it might just snap off and if we had to get them to watch too many more of these. Um, <laughs> but sure. I think those, I, we really li- actually liked our Megalon episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a really good time on that one. Uh, and you know, if you want to do something other than Godzilla, I like our Gamera versus Gauss episode because it's the first one that I really enjoyed. So that was kind of (laughs) nice. Um, other than that, our, our big recap at the end where we kind of talk about the entire Godzilla series is a Mm -hmm. nice point to see if you, if, if if a listener just wants to kind of wrap their head around our general thoughts on most of the movies. Even if we do break down some of them in uh, less than flattering ways, we actually kind of like most of them. Yeah. <laughs> but I yeah. still th- I still think my favorite episode so far, like the 98 one was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't send it over to Chris because he hasn't seen them yet, but I loved your guys' episodes on the anime trilogy. Like just oh. seeing how you progressively liked them more and more. Because I remember you, you had said that you didn't like Planet Eater. And then by the time you finish, you're like, okay, I changed my mind. Yes. And... That's what I love about uh, your guys' podcast is you started out as the huge mega nerd fanboy. Eric was a skeptic. And by the end of it, I mean, you could hear both of your opinions evolve and change. And that's, to me, the fun part about it. I don't want to just listen to people do an auditory... I can't say it on this podcast, but you yeah. know what I mean, right? We're suddenly yeah. family friendly. <laughs> yes, we're suddenly family friendly. But I, I don't really care about you know, this constant bickering or picking movies apart. I want to hear about how people enjoy stuff. And that's what I got from you guys. Even with all monsters attack, hearing you begrudgingly say good things about it. Like I'll take that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there's definitely good things to say about all monsters attack. No doubt. I just, if, if films falter in certain ways, I can't get on board. And I think if you falter all these awesome messages you do have, if you don't deliver them, I can't really get behind it, but like you said about the anime trilogy, that was a shock. Like <laughs> watching this series again, I, I I couldn't believe how much I liked it. Like I liked the first two movies pretty mm-hmm. good, but to like the third one as much as I did after hating it, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. And one of the benefits of <laughs> my podcast for me is that I don't really research the movie. I, I did it early on. Mm-hmm. to go to like deliver more for our my listeners but then i realized that as i learned more about the movies behind the scenes it was actually affecting my opinion 
Yeah. So I tried to learn as little as possible about the movies going forward with just some cursory things or anything I find out on Twitter. Uh, and it's really let me approach the movies from like a no nostalgia. No, mm. like I don't appreciate the special effects really because I mean, I, I like the special effects, but I don't appreciate all the work that went into it because if it looks good now, then <laughs> then that's that's all my, my listeners need to know about how I feel about it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Minion never looked good, right? Yeah, he was, <laughs> we talked about that last time. <laughs> um, Chris, do you have any questions you want to ask before we get in? Um, yes. How far are you from the space women? <laughs> well, mm, I'd say half a light year. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> And that reminds me, you are our first guest on the show that actually has kids. So, yes, the dad jokes make sense. <laughs> oh, um, they're, they're a couple movies away. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that that movie is so bad. It's good. Like, I'm so excited to rewatch that along with you guys. So. Uh, yeah. Well, what, <laughs> the our current recording of uh, God's or Gamera versus Giron is just me and Eric calling each other Florbella and Barbella. So the, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes uh, to space women, me and Eric have a good time. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> it's like, the room. bad and wording. Cue, cue crickets. Okay. <laughs> so before we dig ourselves deep in a hole down in the North pole here, mm-hmm. we are discussing the, I don't even know if it's infamous. I think it's almost the ignored and neglected mm-hmm. redheaded stepchild of kaiju films, uh, King Kong Escapes. So, Alex, if you could do the honors of reading this plot summary I came up with this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. I read through it earlier. Uh, you gave me a little teaser that it was something to behold. Um, <laughs> this one goes out to our uh, mutual friend Vanit, by the way. Yes, yes. I almost made a beat to play, <laughs> but since this isn't my well, podcast, was that a I did too. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Commander Carl Nelson likes giant apes. That's the truth. But he also has an arch nemesis, Doctor Who, who lacks a tooth or two. So when Nelson, Jiro, and Susan Watson find Kong, On the Isle of Mondo, they decide the situation is dangerous and try to leave pronto. But who, that crafty supervillain, along with Madame Piranha, conspired to bring Kong to the North Pole away from his island sauna? This is because who had made a robot ape quite nice, but he was unable to dig for Element X through the thick, thick ice. The real Kong fared better, but eluded Doctor Who's hypnosis. And swam away to Tokyo faster than you can say <laughs> tuberculosis. The movie ends up with Kong and his robot rival fighting on Tokyo Tower. But it's a Toho film, so it's obvious who wins. It was Kong with his mighty power. Our cast says hooray, Doctor Who tries to get away, but Kong puts an end to his schemes. So the question remains in the episode today, is the movie is this the movie of our dreams? <laughs> I almost made it to the end without making a single mistake. And then I see my (laughs) wife lurking in the background over here, grabbing some water. (laughs) You know, I I will admit, I'm like, what rhymes with hypnosis? So I was like, rhyme dictionary. And I went to the very bottom. I'm like, okay, (laughs) tuberculosis. tuberculosis. There we go. (laughs) Oh, man. Thank you so much for that. That was really good. I appreciate that. Thank you. I had fun. I had fun. Um, so we're just going to blow through the cast and staff here. Uh, so director is Ashiro Honda. Um, the writer is Takeshi Kimura. So this is, uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, but this is probably one of his most lighthearted films that he's done. Um, especially compared to like Matongo. Um, Tomoyuki Tanaka is producer. Uh, Akira Ifakube comes back to write the music. Um, we get Hajime Koizumi back uh, behind the camera. And then this is actually... Unfortunately, the last film Honda and Subaraya would do together uh, before Subaraya passed. Um, As for the cast, we get Akira Takarada as Lieutenant Commander Jiro Nomura, Maihama as Madame Piranha, 
Uh, Rhodes' reason is Commander Carl Nelson, but the Japanese film, which is what we all watched here, uh, he's dubbed over by uh, Kei Taguchi. And then Linda Miller is uh, Lieutenant Susan Watson. Uh, she's dubbed over by Akiko Santo. So Hideo Amamoto plays Doctor Who. So Alex, because I know Alex, uh, Chris hasn't watched it yet, did you recognize who Doctor Who was? Because he's in a later film. Mm, no, I did not. Which you would think <laughs> with those teeth, I would. Yeah. <laughs> so he is the the kind of mysterious guy from GMK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he's he's had other roles, but I figured because I remember you commenting on him. So yeah, I we called him a pervert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with his trench coat. Yeah. Um, then we get Yoshibumi Tajima and uh, Sachio Sakia as Doctor Who's assistants. Um, uh, Shoichi Hiros, uh, he plays a minor role in the film, but he actually played King Kong in King Kong vs. Godzilla, along with some other kaiju roles, so it's cool to see that. And then uh, we get uh, Hayata from Ultraman back as Doctor Who's henchman, but he had a mustache. Mm. He looks very nice with that. Um, Haru Nakajima, instead of playing Godzilla, plays King Kong. And then Hiroshi Sakita plays Mechanicong or Gorosaurus. Um, I know we watched the Japanese version for this episode, but when you both have a chance to watch the dubbed version, which I highly recommend, uh, Paul Freeze does the dubbing for Doctor Who, uh, who plays Boris and Rocking Bullwinkle. So, oh, oh, really? Yes. <laughs> does he ham so, it up? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Christmas dinner. It is that hammed up. <laughs> <laughs> He's been sitting on that one. <laughs> Actually, no. I, that came just like just like that. <laughs> so just a little bit of trivia before we get into the discussion. So I didn't realize that this movie is actually based off of a cartoon um, off of ABC TV back in 1966. Uh, so that's actually like Doctor Who. We see Mechanic Kong. Those ideas came from the show, so they weren't even original huh. to the movie. Um, and so I got all this from the Honda biography, by the way. So, you know, a couple similarities to Ebra, um, which makes sense considering that was supposed to be a King Kong movie. Um, so we see exaggerated villains of an unspecific nationality secretly creating fuel for nuclear weapons in a South Seas setting. Um, what's interesting, though, is Reason was not excited about how the film was being made. And he actually tried to do everything he could to change the process because he thought the way that Honda and everyone else was making the film was, in his words, primitive. That was interesting, mm. um, considering Honda actually enjoyed working with Reason quite a bit. So Linda Miller, this was her first movie role. And it was her last major movie role. This is the only major role that she had. Huh. Uh, I actually watched an interview she did yesterday or it was the day. Yeah, it was yesterday for a Kaiju Con, Kaiju Con line. Um, so she, I guess her parents were Air Force and they lived oh. in Japan and they found her. But what's unfortunate is in the dubbed version, she is actually dubbed over. She's dubbed in both versions? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So... Really what I thought was interesting as well in the, the biography here. So we've talked about on our show, progressively more and more of the shows are being directed towards kids and marketed towards kids, right? So uh, CG Tani, who would be Honda's assistant director for Destroy All Monsters, is quoted as saying, Towards the later years, the human drama aspect got thinner and thinner. We had this discussion. Tanaka was there with us, and I asked him directly, Why can't we make the same sort of films but geared towards adults? Honda-san didn't say anything. Maybe he couldn't say anything. Tanaka looked at me with a very troubled face. He replied, The company keeps telling us to target the kids' market, and if we don't attract the kids, we can't get enough box office. Honda-san had a very bitter smile on his face. So it, it's yeah. interesting, right, that it's not even necessarily, because I think, Alex, you and I talked about with, like, Gamera. Um, I, I wondered, I was like, with it being directed towards kids, was it because the director wanted to do that or is it because they realized that was the only way to get people to right. watch the movie, right? Yeah. And the last thing is with Mai Hama, uh, she was actually a Bond girl in You Only Live Once. 
Um, but some of the reviews were confused by that. Like, why would you add sex appeal for a kid's movie? Well, why um, wouldn't you? <laughs> and the quote is, perhaps that's a little present for the dads who have to bring the kids to the theater. Exactly. That's, that's how you make a perfect kid's movie is to appeal to all ages. It's like the Shrek <laughs> of the Godzilla films. Oh, God. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I remember being a kid and not understanding what it meant about Lord Farquaad's castle and he, he was overcompensating. As yeah. an adult, I'm like... Exactly. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. See, they used to do got Bond girls, now they do suggestive things. <laughs> no, it's it's ridiculous, though. Like, some of these shows, like, not not even necessarily shows, but movies that come out, like, I think... When I watched The Grinch, the new one, I was surprised at how clean that was just because I've been conditioned to like every animated cartoon having some sexual joke. I mean, you can go back to SpongeBob and look at some of the jokes they made back in the day. And I'm like, Uh, those are pornographic references. It's quality television. And now Paw Patrol, the raunchiest kid show on TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, uh, see, you see what those dogs get up to. <laughs> <laughs> you know when they flew the red rocket into space, I was just like, "What?" <laughs> oh, Chris, if you could read the uh, the poll for us and announce the results. The poll. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Is that a Paw Patrol reference? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Here's the poll, and so. What we asked, we being David, which movie so far has had the best antagonist or antagonists? And so the choices for movies were Mothra vs. Godzilla, The Invasion of the Astro Monster, Ebera Horror of the Deep, or King Kong Escapes. So without any, I mean, David, you know the, you know the results, I think, I hope. There's but, only one answer. Oh, yeah. What is the answer? I need to know if you lined up. All right. I'm going to go with Invasion of Astro Monster. Yeah. It it, it won in a landslide. (laughs) Yeah. So Invasion of Astro Monster had 54.1% of the votes. Uh, Mothra versus Godzilla got about half of that at 27.1. King Kong Escapes was in third. And then Ebra, like... Some people voted for it, maybe out of pity. (laughs) (laughs) I'm, I'm surprised... King Kong Escapes beat Ebra only because it's not a Godzilla movie. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I was surprised too. But I mean, as we'll get into, like, I actually really enjoyed the antagonist in this film. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's hard to beat an invasion of Astro Monster. It's just such a fun movie in general. And then obviously you have the commander and everything else. Well, sorry, the controller, you know, and just, yeah. I mean, it has Glenn. Well, yeah, they, I mean that's my that's my excuse for it being one of my favorites. And anytime your villain dies by flicking his tongue repeatedly, you know you've got a gem on your hands. <laughs> okay, I've got to ask: Can you please do your recreation of that scene? Because that was my favorite part of that episode. Oh, uh, um, let me see if I can remember. <clears throat> <laughs> So this is why I have lined up more guests for our show, because this is so much fun. (laughs) Oh, boy. Thanks for that, Alex. Yeah, you're welcome. So uh, like we've kind of already indicated, you know, what's unfortunate about this movie is it seems like it's continually passed over and over when it comes to discussions about kaiju films in the 60s. Um, really similar to Frankenstein Conquers the World, right? Doesn't have any major Godzilla. Well, it doesn't have Godzilla at all. Doesn't have any major Godzilla monsters. So it doesn't have King Ghidorah, Mothra, or anything like that. But between the first appearance of Gorosaurus and the precursor to Mecha Godzilla, is this fall is this film falsely maligned or is it simply less refined? That's what I asked our uh, our Twitter followers, and I really did. I was surprised at how many positive comments we got. Um, it's not because it's a bad film, but really it's, I was expecting it just to kind of get ignored. Um, so we have giant monster messages. I actually listened to their episode on the movie yesterday and they said, I believe that because it doesn't have any Godzilla, it's not talked about as much. 
the film is of equal quality of anything else released at the time. But then you also had, you know, Call Me Joe 9 said, it's no bad film by any stretch of the imagination, but outside of the two factoids you mentioned, there admittedly isn't much holding my interest. And for him, he said it's because he wasn't engaged with the humans in the movie. Um, you know, he has his own hierarchy of needs that changes depending on the film. And I appreciate that he's honest about that, right? Everybody's mm-hmm. going to watch a movie for different reasons. And then yeah. lastly, we had uh, Sean Ray, the Varan fan. Oh, what a what a beautiful name. Um, he said, <laughs> it's a good movie, perfect for a lazy Sunday viewing. Sure, it's not the most serious thing in the world but it's certainly better than some Godzilla and Gamera movies. So how about you guys? I mean, this is a movie I grew up watching, right? So I think, Alex, you said this was the first time you've watched it, and then clearly, Chris, this is the first time you've watched it. So hash it out. Like, what did you guys think about this movie? Uh, This was a surprise for me. You know, I don't know how you saw this growing up, because I don't know. I think one of the reasons it's maligned, I guess, is that it's overlooked because there's no easy way to access it. I was surprised at how much how much fun it was. Uh, uh, Mechanic Kong looks great. The effects are pretty solid. King Kong doesn't look as bad as he did in King Kong vs. Godzilla, which is a huge plus. And the villains are really fun. They, they really kind of sell this movie for, it, for me. I do think it's a little slow at the beginning. But overall, I think it's a pretty good ride. And I like the giant submarine. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I similarly, I kind of wonder because, I mean, I even had asked David literally yesterday, the day before we recorded this, like how many King Kong movies are there? Because as far as I know, there's like the two modern ones, King Kong versus Godzilla sometime in the future, hopefully. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the original. So I'm wondering if it's just not discussed because like, I wonder like, how hardcore do you have to be to know this is, even exists? Because if it's really that hard to find, which has shocked me now that my library has a copy, if it's that if it's actually hard to find. Um, but yeah, I wonder how hardcore you have to be. But it is interesting because, <clears throat> you know, the stock, this this version of Doctor Who, not as good as David Tennant, maybe a little bit more fun than the there Ninth Doctor. But <laughs> <laughs> And about 20 minutes in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So I don't remember how I watched it. I'm I, I'm confident it was either VHS, um, or it, so I was. You know, my parents were those parents that would, if they saw Godzilla on TV, we you know had the VHS recorder where you could plug a you know put a blank one in. You just bootleg it right, and you kind of make sure you stop it right when the commercial started and right. try to get it when it started again. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I grew up with it. So, but I grew up with the dub version, right? So again, you know, you had Paul Freese doing the voicing for Doctor Who. It just you got the original. Amer- well, I say the original. Uh, at least you got Rhodes Reason's voice on it compared to uh, compared to Miss Miller. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was just one of those films I grew up. I liked Gorosaurus. Mechanicon was awesome. Um, but what's funny though is you know watching the Japanese version like it's actually like maybe maybe you guys would disagree with me here I actually thought it was a pretty serious film like it's fun but it's definitely not like the campiness that we've expected with both Ebera and Son of Godzilla mm-hmm. right the, yeah. the villains are very cartoonish yet Doctor Who is still very I mean, he's literally going to torture two of our characters to yeah. get information out of them. I was, I was really surprised when I watched it again. I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, um, and the whole hypnosis stuff with Kong, and I don't. I mean, some. I, th- I think you said one of the Twitter users said it's not very serious, but I think you're right. I think it actually kind of is. Like it's got goofy villains, just like you said, which I didn't realize that uh, Doctor Who was from the Rankin and Bass mm-hmm. cartoon, but. His his entire demeanor is very cartoonish and probably lives up to the original vision, which I haven't seen. But I really I, I really enjoyed this movie. Agorosaurus, I forgot he was in this. He looks great. Yeah. Agorosaurus looks really good. I think the only complaint I had about the suits were, A, when King Kong's fighting with Gorosaurus, you can see the, the back flap of the suit come up. And then when Kong gets in the water oh, yeah, with bad. the snake, that is like 
we had a, someone comment the other day about the video I made of Minya, and they were talking about how that reminded them of like you know sleep terror demons or whatever. Yeah, and I was like that right there. That image is just like it's absolutely terrifying. Yeah, I thought it was a bold choice to make Doctor Who and King Kong have the same type of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> So what you're saying is don't get any of the suits moist because that's when ding, the ding, 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 <laughs> the word of the day. <laughs> this, this week's episode sponsored by the letter moist. Oh God, have I been doing the alphabet wrong? The letter moist. <laughs> moist. But yeah, it, so you're right though. So that's kind of wanted to jump into our first talking point here. So, you know, it's weird because you see on the one hand, the creators are talking about this movie is being targeted for kids, right? But again, we're having characters like these are definitely the in previous films, you might have an argument of like a little bit more of a nuanced antagonist where even with like the capitalists and Mothra versus Godzilla, like clearly they're supposed to be bad, like bad guys, right? But Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not sinister. They're not maniacal. They're just trying to make money and Yes, they're stepping on the backs of others, but it's not like they're the typical mustache twirling bad guys. And this is the first film where really we see that most explicitly. But, I mean, again, we we have characters that are threatening to torture. You know, he shoots Madame Piranha. I mean, it, it it's weird to me that this was marketed for kids because I don't mind my son watching the the dubbed version, but this one just felt a bit darker. But when I when I watched the movie, I kind of wondered how much of this could be reflective to the state of kaiju films now. Right. So one of the reviews mentioned how it felt like this was a comment on how everything was becoming mechanized or, you know, just kind of it's systems and all this stuff. You know, so Mechanic Kong, right. Everything's a process and all that. But I wonder if this is also a, a, maybe a commentary how Honda felt trapped in the movie making machine. Right. Because, I mean, Toho, they're a studio. It's all about money, you know, so that's why they kept targeting kids. That's why, you know, after Matongo, Toho's like, we're going to keep having you do kaiju films, kaiju films, kaiju films. He didn't get to make the movies he really wanted to until he started working with Kurosawa. So do you think maybe there's something to be said here where you have a life and blood monster compared to the mechanical one? And now, of course, which one wins? It's the real one. Um, do you think there's anything there or do you think that's just kind of a result of, you know, studio interference? And I don't know. I was curious to hear what you guys thought. Hmm. I think it's possible. You know, I don't know how explicit it is and saying that, but there's a there's a real possibility. And I mean, Honda was you see it. I mean, when he comes back to the Godzilla franchise that it his movies aren't quite the same. Mm-hmm. And until maybe Terror of Mechagodzilla, it feels like we're getting Honda back, like actually back this time. So I don't, I, I think there is something there for him being uh, just disenchanted with the whole process. I mean, we see that we see that with the last two movies that you all saw. And even though I think most people at least enjoy them somewhat, Son of Godzilla and Ebera, they're not the movies that. It, I don't think most creators at the time were wanting to make, and mm-hmm. they were being strong armed into doing it. So you could definitely say that Honda was feeling that same frustration at the time. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, I definitely felt like he had more creative liberties with this than some of his uh, previous films. So obviously, we've discussed Frankenstein and War of the Gargantuas, but this felt more like, in my opinion, a Honda film compared to. War of the Gargantuas. Like, I don't know if you would agree with that or not, um, but at least you could kind of feel his personality coming through a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. not being silenced in this one, I don't think. I, I, no. I feel Honda's vision, at least in this, at least somewhat, but uh, I don't feel like he's quite taken the turn that the Godzilla films had at this point with uh, Jun Fukuda. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, curious. Not, not like... Not enough for you to tweet at me, but I'm curious to see like how maybe the box office has been. Has it kind of declined? Has it kind mm-hmm. of gone up? Like has this shift in audience like actually worked? I would think yes, because they're still going. But if this one he gets a little bit of his vision back, like 
does he get that does do they let it back i don't know it's it's like what you're talking about with behind the scenes i try and avoid it as much as possible too because never i mean it usually never helps me enjoy mm-hmm. a movie right. more but yeah you do i did notice like if you'd asked me who wrote this one i'd probably say it was closer to honda mm-hmm. but maybe that's just because his themes yeah, are back right. too we're actually talking about nuclear power nuclear fallout yeah again. yeah it does it, it does feel like a honda movie yeah yeah so i can give you a little bit of clarification there so i know there's a lot that's been said about how we see a boom in kaiju and tokusatsu at this point right and because at this point you know ultraman is blowing up the tv you know so you had ultra q that came out i think in 1966 and what I didn't know is that last episode wasn't aired for the longest time because it didn't. I don't think it had a monster in it, right? Oh, I, it's it's yeah, been a while no, since doesn't. I've seen it. Yeah, it so I think they waited to air that one because they were like, okay, it doesn't have a monster. It's not attracting things, uh, attracting viewers. Excuse me. So that's what we see with Ultraman. Is a lot of people are, are focusing on the TV now compared to movies, right? Because if you could sit home and watch Ultraman on TV, why would you go to the movie theater? Right. Um, so I think there's an element of that where, you know, they're trying everything they can to get people to go to the movies. But when you have Godzilla movies, you have King Kong movies, and now you have Gamera movies, you know, the Daimajin, uh trilogy would have been released right around the same time. I mean, there's just there's just so much. It's oversaturated. I mean, it's kind of like how you are with, uh, with comic movies now, where comic book movies now, where, I mean, they're fun. But you're just, you get overwhelmed. You're like, okay, well, which one do I watch? Especially when they release back to back to back to back. All of them. What's that? Uh, all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're welcome. Uh, you're safe here. I know there's a lot of people that hate on, I, I, I still don't understand the hatred towards comic book movies in the kaiju fandom. I just, it's not mutually exclusive, but that's besides the point. <laughs> so obviously, you know, I didn't think that Honda was specifically like writing about that. I just think there's something to be said where, you know, you're watching these movies like like the Gamera films. Don't get me wrong. Like they're fun for what they are. But there's like, I mean, to me, when you're looking at like the effects in both movies, there's no comparison. Right. I mean, King Kong Escapes had double the budget of the original film. Um, And, you know, you can see in the suit designs, the set designs, everything. It looks great. Gamera is fun. But even with like you just watch gear on. I mean, Space Gauss was literally, they just spray painted the Gauss suit, right? It's just silver. Yep. Yeah, and it's just the quality of the suits, it's very minimal. I mean, they keep everything within like two or three sets. They're fun. It's just, to me, there's not a huge comparison there. And no. I just, so with this movie here, I almost just felt like it was Honda's way of like trying to invigorate some fun and life into a, a genre he felt trapped in. Um, and that's partially why I love All Monsters Attack, which obviously Chris hasn't watched that, so we won't get into that. But just the, the it's a slice of life movie, right? Mm-hmm. It's not a typical kaiju film. It it has more in connection and relation with his first films before he ever did Godzilla than it does a Godzilla movie. It's interesting you bring up TV because it, like, what what year was this again? Uh, 1967. Okay, so you've got like you've got the first Common Rider in '71. And then you get Go Ranger in ninety in seventy five, which is where they start pushing even more genres. So, and I don't know, watching Ultraman Z even I, we both watched episode four recently, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is a Godzilla monster, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, especially right. when he gets the frills. Spoiler alert! Like it's like, oh my god, have I seen this one? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, it's really interesting though, as we talk about the directors winding down. Like, they seem to be kind of like, ah, get me out of this. He said Fukuda didn't really enjoy his. Honda seems to be hitting a rut. But Toku itself has kind of taken off. So mm-hmm. it's really kind of an interesting, like, phenomenon that's going on here. Yeah. And I know Kamen Rider is a horror, and it's four years later, and it doesn't use the same kind of set work. But it, it is interesting that as Ultraman picks up, like, the director's like, oh, come on, man. I'm out, I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, they're looking for ways out of their contracts at that point. (laughs) How many did I sign for? (laughs) So this will get me flack, you know, because we're just normal G fans who don't know anything about Ultraman. You said, or Toku. So you said Kamen Rider is a horror in the horror genre? Yeah, totally. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. 
so it's like it's like the human hybrid horror like the first in the first five episodes you've got like a vampire beetle bat who he like bites people it's really graphic turning them into their own vampires Um, yeah okay the the scary mantis man who like he's like trying to stab people like it's very horror yeah very 70s horror yeah but people get (laughs) dissolved and like pulls of blood okay yeah it it, common writer's great (laughs) yeah (laughs) Speaking of more mature themes, um, Chris, you had mentioned, though, that this movie felt like it was a return to some of the the original themes, right? Sure. Nuclear warfare, stuff like that. And I think that gets back to having Takeshi Kimura as the writer again. So, you know, for those of you who don't remember all the movies that he's done, um, the ones that we've discussed on the show so far have been Rodan. Matango, Frankenstein Conquers the World, and War of the Gargantuas, right? Those are just a couple. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is, you know, it's before we would have had Shinichi Sekizawa, he usually has the more upbeat, fun, whimsical scripts. I mean, and some of those are my favorite. Like Mothra vs. Godzilla is still like, apart from the original, my favorite Godzilla movie. And it shows. It's, it's a fun script, but it has a lot to say. But then we get to this movie where... It's interesting, you know, I, I grew up with a dubbed version, so it doesn't hit as hard. So when you watch the subversion and you have Madame Piranha talking to Doctor Who and, you know, King Kong and Mechanic Kong are going to Japan or uh, Tokyo and she's like, hey, you know, we need to stop this because, you know, thousands of lives are going to be lost. And Doctor Who's like, well, why does it matter? Because you're here trying to mine element X. And if you would use this as a weapon, millions of lives are going to be lost, right? So mm-hmm. why care about this short-term thing, you know, and not care about what's going to happen? She, I think in the dub version, it's like, you know, when did you all of a sudden get a sense of morality? And, yeah. but it, honestly, though, it made me think about, you know, and not to get super divisive here, but the argument about World War II and the dropping of the bombs, because you have an argument that, well, you know, we saved, you know, thousands of lives here, you know, on, you know, at the war and it stopped the war, right? So we saved thousands of soldiers, but then I'm like, but what about the countless innocent lives that were lost? And I felt like it's, it was kind of a similar discussion of, you know, what is the cost of war? You know, we sit here and we try to boil it down to, you know, we really, we try to put numbers and statistics to it, right? But as we talked about in a previous episode, the idea of just war or I guess maybe that was even my my post on July 4th about Just War is on the basis of Just War, one innocent life lost is still too many. So it, it was just interesting watching that and being like, oh, okay. Again, people call this a silly movie, but like that's a pretty serious discussion. That's just like, it's not like a throwaway line, but I think it really sinks in like how conflicted she is because she's having to make that realization of, well, if I keep doing this, more lives are going to be lost, but she hasn't really thought that through yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think there's something there. I don't know what it is. I wonder if her mind was changed about the value of life when Dr. Who is torturing uh, Mm -hmm. two of our protagonists. I'm so bad with names, even on my podcast, (laughs) Um, (laughs) but he's got both. She, he's got both of them freezing to death and she's not okay with it. Do you mm-hmm. think that that moment when she realizes that torturing is like not not her jam, that she now values life a little more than she thought she did when when using a weapon weapon is kind of this arbitrary thing where they're going to launch it. She doesn't have to see the toll it's going to take. Yeah. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. There's no real. I mean, there's consequence, but for her, there's not really any consequence. But mm-hmm. it's actually seeing it firsthand changes her mind. Do you think that maybe that was what did it for? Her? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I've read stories of people who, you know, they enlist in the military and when they finally actually have to like kill someone, it, like it's life changing, right? You you don't go back from that. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, there's also an element too of, you know, you think about the the progression of drone warfare and there's been critiques of that because as as society has progressed, you know, it used to be we would stab each other with spears, you know, kill each other with rocks. It was a very intimate thing. And then as war is now, well, you could sit behind a computer screen and drop a bomb and kill people. Like there's, you don't get to see, you know, as they say, the whites of their eyes as you used to. You forget, you know, that these are human beings. So yeah, 
I think that is part of it. We do see that change where she's like, wait a minute, my decisions now are going to affect actual lives. But for her, she was just thinking of political power, political influence, because she said her country, you know, they just they wanted to have something to be known for. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, and even theoretically, talking about drones, if you push a button, you don't have to see what it caused. Mm -mm, no. If you, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure people who do it do know, but like you could theoretically not. So, yeah, right. absolutely. This this distance that weapons give us is such like you know you talk about moral injury, which is when it's not just that we're not just hurt emotionally or physically, but our moral capabilities are injured. We, there seems to be more of that in drone warfare. Like we get more injured because the effects are so much bigger, but we're so much more distanced to it too, and it puts us in this weird liminal zone. But um, hmm. I mean, you could even think about like this short term versus long term ethical society, like even with masks, I think like in the short term, we want the economy back, but we don't think about the long term. What's it going to be like if we don't do this wisely, if we don't do this well? Like, I just think it's a it's a commentary on human nature to say, like, I think about now, I think about right now. But the long term, it's just that's too much processing for me. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. And I think there's something, too, where, you know, you had mentioned that, you know, you're recovering right now, right, Alex? And a lot of people, they don't think about it. Or you're... Uh, I'll, we, we don't, I'll find out whether I have it yeah. very soon. Hopefully yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so let me let me rephrase it. I have a friend up in uh, Michigan. Uh, he's not much older than I am. And he he's recovering from having, you know, COVID-19, right? And I think a lot of people, they don't think about how serious it is until they actually have someone close, right? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, sometimes that means having someone close to you that dies. Yes. And we have to ask, you know, should we care about something before it directly affects me? You know, we talked to last uh, last episode, you know, what do we owe to each other? Right. You know, talking about the good place. And that's what I actually loved about that show is the ethical discussions they had about more than just what benefits me as a person. But if this whole system of good and bad is damning others and countless others, maybe we should relook the system because it shouldn't just be about how I benefit. If there's people that truly deserve to have, you know, not, I wouldn't say prosperity because that makes me think of like Joel Osteen, right? But like the philosophical idea of prosperity where everyone should be able to enjoy life and have their needs met and all that stuff. And that's that. So again, just kind of that show really gets into like, you know, if I benefit, but someone else suffers, do I truly even benefit? Mm -hmm. Right. I think, you know, kind of going back with that a little bit is, I think it's, all, it's human nature to not have an understanding of mm -hmm. everything around you and to not take things as seriously maybe as you should, because you can only process and take so much before you're just mm -hmm. completely overwhelmed. So you're, I think Absolutely. you naturally compartmentalize these things in a way that allows you to process it. Sometimes it's a detriment to your own well-being. And yeah. you treat something as it's not serious because, well, it is. But, you know, we drive cars every day. We're flying 65 miles an hour every day, Look at, mm -hmm. sometimes looking at our phones, sometimes doing all these things. And these are horrific things that could happen. But in your mind, it's not real. That wouldn't happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've normalized it, too, mm -hmm. though, you know. Yeah. And the, it, it's weird how we do that. You know, I was having a discussion with some people I went to high school with where, I mean, this may not seem traumatic, but looking back, like it was, it was absolutely a problem where, you know, we were in marching band and the rule was that, you know, you had to wear black socks, right? And a girl showed up for practice. It was, it was, a, it was a, a performance and she forgot her black socks. She was just having a tough day. He took spray paint and spray painted her legs so that she would look like she had black socks. Looking back, I'm like, nowadays you'd get fired or something like that. Oh, yeah. Right. And again, I'm not saying it's necessarily abusive, but like just we normalize that because we're like, oh, well, she should have worn socks. We've also looked back and also seen that like he got handsy with some of the students. And we're like, we never really thought about how that was bad. We just normalize things because, well, he wasn't doing it to me. Right. right. You just so you're right with the whole car thing driving. Well, I, I can text and drive. I'm not getting in an accident, so I'm fine. I'll just do it because I'm a good driver. Yeah. You know, or I won't wear a mask because, you know, well, I haven't got sick yet and, you know, this and that. So, yeah, it's it's with, you know, Miss Piranha. You know, she hasn't seen any lives 
lost because of her decisions until she gets to that point and she starts right. seeing like wait these people didn't deserve this like mm -hmm. why 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 are we doing this why can't we just do something else to get what we need and she starts realizing the cost of her decisions but let's be real it's because she she likes the commander oh yeah she does she makes it pretty clear she likes <laughs> <laughs> so seeing his uh, face torn off by Doctor Who probably wouldn't have been too appealing for. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Unless she like puts it up on her, you know, on her wall and I, just stares do, at it before I, going I do to just want to. Like, this is kind of yeah, off topic, but I really <laughs> do like her character. Her whole yeah. arc in this is just is so good. Like she's just so interesting. She comes off as two dimensional initially, and she just keeps adding these layers as the as the movie goes on. Honestly, Did, I think the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, no, I, I was just gonna ask if Alex was the first one to ship this episode. Then, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll let you. I'll let you. Do, I'll let you actually segue into that. Then, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I like the characters in this, and again, this kind of. I know it, it can turn into some like badge of honor, like well, I care about the humans more than the monsters, and it's like. All right, that's not why you started watching the film, nerd. Um, but I actually do like the characters in this movie. You mm -hmm. know, and this this movie here reminds me that you you can do characters well and still have fun monster action. I mean, the fight between Gorosaurus and King Kong is an absolute blast. Like mm -hmm. I've watched this movie countless times, and every time Gorosaurus gets back up, I'm always like, oh yeah, he's not down for the count because he hasn't had his mouth and his jaw broken, and <laughs> how brutal that was mm -hmm. um which it's funny to me there was a comment i think it was subaraya that said like he didn't want blood and all that stuff on a on a movie that's totally fine an ultraman right? right i mean that show is that show is absolutely brutal poor giras oh <laughs> yeah that blood yeah and just the monsters they they explode i mean as you see in ultra seven they get sliced in half but then, you know, Gorosaurus dies and you give him a little bubble bath, right? <laughs> um, it's just whatever. But yeah, I just, these characters are a lot of fun. And it just, it reminds me, you know, talking about Gamera, Gamera versus Giron, it's not the best movie, but those characters are just fun. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to sacrifice one for the other, you know? Right. I agree. I agree. And and those are also two of the dumbest kids I've ever seen in a movie ever. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I will I will say this, uh, Chris. We'll we'll end up if we have time. I would love to circle back and watch those movies. But I remember as a kid being so traumatized with the space women when they shave his head. Like I remember as a kid just being like, oh my gosh, like the thought of my head being shaved for some reason was just mortifying. Oh, it's the and head it's because shaving. Of that movie. Not, not yeah. about what that was going to happen after the head shaving. Well, I think I just kind of, <laughs> I, I equated it, right? I was like, oh my gosh, they're shaving his head because they're going to eat his brains. So I just, I, okay. I couldn't separate the two. I just picture young David <laughs> seeing someone bald and going, oh not my God. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. You know, I, it's. I think all the monsters are starting to get their own little signature moves. Because mm -hmm. doesn't King Kong do the same thing to the T Rex, like rip his jaw open? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in um, twenty twenty somethings, uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. If he ever gets his hands in there, it's game over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm hoping it's just like a trend that happens in all the movies now. <laughs> yeah. You'll just you'll just have to wait for uh, Kong Skull Island, Chris. The it's other so prequel too. Yeah, it it is a really good movie. It's I'm excited awesome. to get into that one. Um, but yeah, that was actually a reference to the original. Like the sea snake was supposed to be, I think, the Elasmosaurus from the original as well, which I haven't watched that one in years. I need to I need to give that a spin. Hmm. Um, but Alex, I thought I would uh, allow you to do something here. So I oh know boy. on your show, Eric is just a taskmaster and only lets you rank things out of five. Yeah. I, I thought I'd give you the that. opportunity to rank this movie out of 10. <laughs> oh. If you want. David. Obviously, you can save it for you're, your episode. You're so um, nice. Uh, all right. So I get to rank something out of 10 finally. I'm going <laughs> to give it a... Uh, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> you would <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a set out of 10 for me I, I really enjoyed it uh, I did think 
Uh, I forgot what the island's called. I don't want to call it Skull Island because that's where King Kong lives but sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think the time on Skull Island before and after the Gorosaurus fight is a little too long. Like, I started to wonder where the wacky movie that I was just at, <laughs> where did that go? Yeah. And that, that's the only really thing that drags it down for me. I mean, I think the final battle between King Kong and uh, Mechanic Kong is a little lackluster. Uh, it's not bad, but it's just it, it lacks some impact uh, for me. But other than that, I mean, the characters are great. We get King Kong jumping out of an Antarctic base and swimming away. <laughs> we get all kinds of like weird mm-hmm. stuff. We get foam, foam gore source mouth. I, what's not to like? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about the fact that King Kong apparently swims from the North Pole to Tokyo in like the matter of hours? Uh, swims yeah. at the speed of plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's it. uh, and that's so. That's my thing is I, I, I've told myself you know you watch these movies and yes the effects are dated but I get so lost in these movies that I don't care about the suit designs I don't really care about the plot holes right because I'm having fun mm. and if I if I want a serious movie I've got my Criterion collection right there's plenty of stuff I could do here I could watch the original. You know, even like Shin Godzilla, I could watch that if I wanted. But I'm not watching these because I'm expecting them to be airtight. I'm not expecting them to be photorealistic. It's supposed to be a kaiju film. It's supposed to be fun. And it does its job. Like, no, it doesn't explain how Doctor Who and Carl Nelson were... uh, It doesn't really explain their backstory, right? But you have enough there to give them that rivalry. And that's that's all I want. Um, So what about you, Chris? If you had to rank this out of 10, where would you rank it? Um... Yeah, I I would probably be a little, I'd be pretty similar. I think it does drag a little bit at times. And uh, the fight, I I definitely appreciated that. What was the one? I don't think, I don't think that one with Gorosaurus. Yeah. Was he named? No, he's not named in it, but he, uh, the next movie we'll watch, we'll see him again. Okay. I thought that one was a lot of fun. Brutal, but Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) Yeah, so probably around the seven too. I, I appreciated giving the, getting some of the themes back, some of the discussions back. It wasn't quite to like the first couple. I, th- I think the thing for me now is we're kind of getting more into it. And I've said I've said these exact words. If you don't like this one, you have a lot of other ones to watch. Mm-hmm. But I do. I am not in that boat. I don't have the liberty to skip to the ones that are good. I don't have the liberty to go to like. Godzilla 98 or uh, All Monsters Attack, the really good ones, right? So sometimes I do kind of watch them like, well, okay, it's fun, but like, <laughs> let's get back to some of the more <laughs> serious ones sometimes. Uh, so, they, oh, I like right. that you have the same mandate on Chris, it sounds like, that I have on Eric, where I'm like, don't jump ahead! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Which, you know, it is going to be tough when hashtag Kong wins on HBO Max 2021. Um, you know, we'll have to wait to watch that one. But I think it's been a lot more fun coming in blind because, you know, and I was thinking about it, you know, our podcast started about the same time. Right. And we both had this totally original thought of having the veteran and the noob. Like, and I've realized like every freaking podcast does that. Um, But for both of our shows, I feel like we've evolved in actually having an identity rather than just discussing the films. Um, But yeah, it's, it's been very, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be strict, but it's a lot more fun when he goes into it blind and only knows well, like, yeah. well, I'm looking at the movie poster. That's about as much information as I've got before I'm, going in. Okay. So the thing is though, we talk about our significant others being taskmasters. Uh, the, I, I have to text David at the end of every episode or when I ask him, Hey, what are we getting into next? It's not for like promotional. It's so I know. <laughs> so I know what to go watch. Um, and I think I've said this multiple times in the show. I can't skip ahead because I don't know what I'm even looking for. Right. So, like, I don't even know which ones exist or not. So I couldn't skip ahead if I wanted to. Mm, so I got it's you. not that he's a hard taskmaster. It's just like, I'm like, so what one's next? How do you yeah. spell that? How, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Where am I finding this one? <laughs> and I even give him the schedule, and he's still like, wait, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, I hit it somewhere on my computer. It's all right. Hey, I get it. I had to ask David several times, like, when are we recording? What day is that? <laughs> and he, every time he messaged me, hey, okay, we're recording next week. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's it is like, I love Chris enough where I'm not going to be like, you know, <laughs> per my previous email, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Too. <laughs> um, but or just, yeah. or just point blank, send the schedule again. <laughs> you know, one of these days I will be petty enough to do that. Um, but yeah, I think for me, like, I think, uh, yeah, I gave it a four out of five on Letterboxd. So that'd be 10, uh, eight out of 10 for me. I think for me, like, I love the suit effects. Um, like, Mechanic Kong just looks incredible. He like, does. they did such a good job with that. Um, and one of the fun things about that is with Mechanic Kong, he actually influences uh, Mecha Godzilla quite a bit. So we see that in obviously just the fact that they created Mecha Godzilla down the road. But Alex in Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2, how they have that shot of um, Mecha Godzilla's feet and it raises up they did that first with Mechanicong, right? Yeah. And then also the fact that in this movie, you see Mechanicong appear out of a building, out of nowhere, yeah. which is just like, you know, Terror of Mechagodzilla. I love that entrance. Oh, no, sorry, not Terror of Mechagodzilla, Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla, when he just shows up in that building. Mm. Like that scene there, um, it's, a, it's just cool seeing how it's influenced other films. Yeah, um, yes. And then also, too, I thought it was interesting, like with King Kong versus Godzilla, they take King Kong in an agreement, whereas Kong's taken here by force, right? So it's just, it's definitely a, I wouldn't say it's not subversive, but they definitely take a few things from the original, do it a little differently. And overall, it's just, it's a fun movie. Um, the actors are great. We get a good leading actor that's not Russ Tamblin from War of the Gargantuas. That guy is just, I'm glad he never did any other films. <laughs> but... <laughs> I thought we would end here. Uh, we actually had a comment from uh, a listener about Son of Godzilla. And Alex, I, I'd love to have your thoughts on this as well. well sure. Can I, can I interject um, one more? You know, just like last week, I had to make this. I had to make it explicitly Christian. So this week, I want to point oh out how God. Uh, King Kong Escapes is kind of like the book of Revelation, right? You've got Kong, who's the Christ figure. And then Mechanic Kong, who's the Antichrist figure. And Kong, like, dies when he goes into this D. And he comes back up at Tokyo, like the risen savior. And <laughs> Gorosaurus is the dragon from Revelation 12 who harasses the saints. And, you know, Revelation 19, the church is a bride, just like Susan is a bride to Kong. So, like, their coming together is like when the New Jerusalem comes down. So, really, if you don't understand Revelation, you can read King Kong Escapes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all on board for this. <laughs> I mean, that's a better reading of Revelation than I got from church for years. So, yeah, I'll take it. It's allegorizing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, um, DC Jr. from the podcast from Odo Island, which I love that name for a podcast. Um, he asked this. This is a bit of a superficial question. You guys accurately pointed out that Son of Godzilla is often a maligned movie. I've always wondered, would it be so disliked if the suits for Godzilla and Minya weren't so ugly? Do we give a pass to movies with cool suits? Mm. So what are your thoughts, guys? A little bit. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think people would be still giving a pass to a good-looking Minya jumping over a Godzilla tail and playing <laughs> on it. <laughs> I don't think... Uh, a lot of people would still give a pass to Godzilla beating a cuter min minya instead of a hellish looking one. <laughs> so wow. I, I do think more people would probably enjoy this if they all looked good. Uh, but I think overall, I, I don't hate Son of Godzilla, but I do think this it's just not a great movie. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you, even if minya is actually cute. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. I think like we said in our episode, the later version isn't so bad. It's just the first few stages where it's just like, uh, I don't know how they came up with that design. Minya looks bad until Final Wars, my friend. 
<laughs> I'm saying in comparison, you've got moist minya and then donkey minya. Like I'll take donkey minya over moist minya every day of the week. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I don't know though. I I think I don't I don't know if I have much of an opinion on how suits look. And even Ultraman Z, some of those suits look very like retro, like very seventies. Mm-hmm. I'm like yeah. I'm I'm watching these. I'm like wow, these look like the original suits that they pulled out of. So I don't know if I like. Can I say this? I don't know if I care if they look bad or good. Like nah, the good. story okay. gets the story like overrides that, and oh. mm-hmm. they're also monsters. So if they look bad, it's not because they're like Miss America. Yeah, they're not yeah. supposed to be. <laughs> I think. I mean, I think that's a completely reasonable and logical approach to a film. Not everything has to look good. Special effects don't always have to look good if the if the story is fun and exciting. Yeah. That's why you get over like Common Rider having just people with makeup in their uh, their fly because they have red paint. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, I, the only time that I think a suit is really like objectively bad is if you could see it like pull apart when he's like about to throw a punch and you just see that. That's when I'd be like, okay, you probably should have done something about that. Yeah. Yeah. But we haven't seen that too often. And I no. doubt we'll see it going forward. No, but you do. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, there's there there'll be a movie down the road where they reuse the suit so many times that you'll see like parts of it hanging off, um, and that's that's budget stuff. That's right? just the battle same, damage. That's just yeah. battle damage. <laughs> it's the same reason you you know you have Godzilla tripping uh, and what is that Mothra versus Godzilla and he lands into the building like they just leave it in. It's yeah. it's budget thing. You can't afford to reshoot it. But sure. I, I actually kind of take the opinion like Son of Godzilla. I mean. Honestly, the way they did his eyes on that suit, it's absolutely disgusting. You know, like there is a point where I'm like, it's, you know, they could have done better, but you got to understand, like, there's all these different time constraints. So I, I'm sympathetic to it, but I get why people who are like, uh, I wouldn't be on board with that. I just think it's funny whenever you have people who are strictly 90s fans or vice versa, strictly 60s fans because of the designs or whatever, when. I mean, ultimately, we're just, we're all nerds. Why should it matter? Wait, so. you're telling me there are people who are, like, only Zilla? No. <laughs> <laughs> just, just only. yes, yes, there are, there are <laughs> Zilla-only fans. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are. But, yeah, only Heisei, I think, is. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely priority given to the cool suit designs, which is fine. I mean, I used, I think I used to rag on people like that, and then I realized, I'm like, eh, it's just. I don't want to be a bully. You right? like what you like. Exactly. We'll judge you in silence. <laughs> Especially since like your opinion on suit design should be kind of the most like benign opinion you have. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't watch a movie because of the suit design, that's one thing. But if you're like, I like this suit and I don't really care what movie it's in, it, that should be a harmless opinion. Yeah, I it, agree. it really is. But you know, really quick before we, we end here, you said something about how you didn't care if the special effects look good, you know, as long as it's a good story. Mm, yeah. Um, or maybe I, I don't want to misquote you, Alex, <laughs> but I feel like that's accurate to the spirit of what you were saying. It's to the spirit. It's not quite 100%. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's getting taken to the nth degree here in a minute. <laughs> All I was going to say is, you know, rewatching the Lord of the Rings movies, like oh, some of those effects are dated. For they're sure. old, they're yes. bad. Some of them are but, bad still some of the best movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Like they're just so well done where I can excuse that because I mean, they were again, they're working with what they had. I rewatched the host recently. Some of the effects there, not great, but it's an amazing movie. So mm-hmm. I'm like, whatever. Okay, what? Alex. So I have a real thought though. It, I actually have a real thought. <laughs> okay, the Stephanie Meyer. I have a real <laughs> thought as, uh, as opposed to a fake one. <laughs> well, that was my Twilight comment. Um, it actually was question. That was an actual genuine a- ask. Um, yeah, I mean, it's Lord of the Rings. You're talking about like when Legolas and I think it's Return of the King slides down the elephant. You know, it's got mm-hmm. some Middle East, uh, M- Middle Earth name. Um, that, you know, it's dated now. But then you got like updated effects in the third Hobbit movie when he's Super Mario jumping across the falling bridge. And that's a good effect in a bad movie. So yeah. we definitely can't be really forgiving, especially through our rose colored nostalgic glasses. So I think yeah. if you liked any of these movies, you can forgive a lot of bad suits. So, yeah, yes, I agree. <laughs> Freaking Chris Twilight. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh, I don't think I've ever had to clarify to anyone when I'm talking about the host. They're never thinking the Stephanie Meyer. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty bad. Has a beer. <laughs> oh, uh, so well, let's quit ragging on him for his favorite book. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, he. I will be honest. He did want to go chapter by chapter of the Twilight series, and I was just like, "Man, I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can do that. You can do that after we're done." Game about like how um, our movie list keeps increasing, and increasing somehow. Yeah, like someone's going back in time to make more of these movies just to keep me on longer. <laughs> he, when he learned that there's the four Twilight books, the host, there's also the new one. Um, from Edward's point of view, he's like, no, no, I got to keep this going as long as I can. Yeah. Just add 50 shades of gray. Oh, I know it's <laughs> fan fiction. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't uh, shame fan fix here. <laughs> so Alex, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Of um, course. So obviously people know you're doing a podcast, but can you plug where people can listen to you? Can you talk about your Patreon? Just anything. This gives you a chance to kind of sell yourself here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can listen to either one of our podcasts. That's 13th, the 13th Floor or Monsters vs. Men. Uh, we're on every podcasting channel. We're trying to add both of them to YouTube. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> and we have a Patreon for uh, Monsters vs. Men where we do another uh, a bonus episode every week about random topics sometimes it's ultraman sometimes it's uh <laughs> what reality show eric is watching at the time which is weird because that's not his jam um or something maybe we grew up with that we really liked or a current movie uh we put those up there and we also release episodes a week early uh it's just you know if, if anyone feels inclined come along for the ride <laughs> <laughs> I've really enjoyed these bonus episodes quite a bit. Um, not that I haven't enjoyed the regular podcast, but just no. hearing you guys. Message nerd- received. Yeah, <laughs> you look pretty today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, listening to like the last one about the the your guys' favorite Ultraman episodes, because I haven't finished the original series. I've been going through it with Jasper. And mm. um, just I loved, I was like waiting for a comment about the anime trilogy since Matt was on there. And of course it was like the last two minutes. I felt so bad for him because yeah. he had done such a good job. We had to, we had to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think if you want the bonus content, I mean, what's, what's your guys tier level on there? Uh, we got a $2 tier level that gets you the bonus episodes the same mm-hmm. time that the normal episodes drop. Mm-hmm. And then if you at the $5 tier, they, uh, you get the, normal episodes and the bonus episodes a week early and then i'm on the spot and i'm trying to remember our our last year. <laughs> and then our, our last tier uh i can't remember oh boy <laughs> all these people paying 20 dollars they're like come on dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're all like uh oh where's all my sweet swag you promised me <laughs> I'm like, what were you talking about? I don't think I ever said any of that. Yeah, the Monsters vs. Men booty shorts. Oh, man. <laughs> Do you guys remember when that was like a thing? I mean, maybe it was because I was in the music scene, but like all these bands would make booty shorts. And they, like they're gym shorts, right? But the guys would still wear them. And that's, I'm just like... That's what I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing you said you shorts. weren't wearing pants. What is the well, truth? <laughs> Fake news. I'm wearing them as underwear, so I guess... Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Mm. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get more into that in a TCAP uh, after dark. But so yeah, Alex, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for tuning in to the Kaiju Apostle podcast. If you like what you heard, have a comment you'd like to share, or maybe you think we spoke way too much about booty shorts. <laughs> uh, make sure to let us know over on our Twitter or Instagram pages. Uh, our handle for both is Kaiju Apostle Pod, uh, or you can email at us at contact at the Kaiju Apostle.com. Uh, You can also follow Chris on Twitter at Chris Worms, that's W-E-R-M-S. As always, I do ask, what are you binging now? Yeah, so I finished Die Ranger, like I said it would, so I'm on Kaku Ranger now. Started watching Ultraman Z, which I don't know how you're watching it, but when you watch it on the YouTube channel, you get like the Japanese ads Mm -hmm. and the YouTube ads. Yeah, And I've got the theme song stuck in my head, even though I don't know what the heck it says. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So yeah, those are my two. Lightspeed Rescue 
instead of bonus episodes, I just clog the Twitter feed with these thoughts. So if you want to like coffee me or Venmo me some money, like in the of Patreon, that's fine. It's really like instead of forcing you to listen to episodes, I'll just tweet. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, your tweets are a lot of fun, but I never know what the crap you're talking about. So You know, it's what my family says. So, like, I read four words of Chris's tweets to see if I need to read it or if I can <laughs> bow out. <laughs> it, it's been fun to watch your uh, little journey uh, with the Super Sentai stuff. <laughs> yeah, he just, like, he didn't even care about... He just dove right in, no floaties or anything. It's just fun watching him swim around the pool. Where do I start, Chris? Tell me where to start. Well... Uh, through Tokushatsu, you only have so many options. You oh, is that where you're Man. watching it? Yeah, you have Jetman back from '92, and it only goes up to Gal Ranger, so you've only got ten years worth. This is a ten lot of words worth. that I don't know. <laughs> See, I like Ultraman because the separate series are so clear. It's just Ultraman. But are they separate? Because all separate. these ads are like, here's every Ultra person, and I'm like, what? You gotta yeah, sell toys. Keep up with this one. <laughs> Well, now they have to sell toys of all the Ultraman like every year. Yeah. So now they make appearances all the time. But the old series, it's just one. <laughs> Especially when he's like morphing through the three and it's like, oh, yeah, Ultraman. Yeah. Also Ultraman. Oh, and then there's the third Ultraman. <laughs> yeah, they, they really push that toy angle in the modern series. It's uh, it's off-putting Thank at you, first, Bandai. but now I'm like all on board. I'm like, I just want the toy now. I just want to sit here and pretend I'm Ultraman. <laughs> As a grown man. <laughs> Here's another chant, my name. <laughs> it's funny because you say that, but my son has yet to ask me for anything on there because they're obviously toy commercials. Oh, he hasn't yeah, asked, yeah. but he's still badgering me because the other day I was like, hey, maybe we'll pick up a board game. I told him that we'd get Jumanji. And every day he's what? like, is today the day we're getting Jumanji? And I'm like, you should never no. have said it. You shouldn't. I know, so I might have to do that today. Hey, hey, quick question. Have you seen Jumanji? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, just, I mean, the plot of the yeah. movie suggests maybe a different board game. But <laughs> it's, it's rated for five and older, and he's mm-hmm. almost five. So, how old were the kids the in the movie? That got us in this situation, but that's right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> also, uh, ugh, excuse me. Also, yeah. uh, Man, I can't. You guys you got okay me all tripped you up want me here. Take over? All right. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. So, also, if you could leave a five star review over on iTunes, that really does help a lot. Because if you search Kaiju or Godzilla on these podcasting platforms, there's like a hundred defunct podcasts before you can even get to us. So, mm. stuff like that really does mean a lot. If you do leave a review, we will read it on the air. But until next time, may Mothra watch over you. Godzilla empower you, and Minya bring you joy. Amen. Amen. He will never bring you joy. And don't worry about noise. I've got a pretty good uh, noise reducer, so don't worry about that. Okay. Um, you don't know how many times I've farted during the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. I'm leaving that one in. So okay. That's, so that, that's what that sound is. Whenever I hear it, sounds like you're mu- you're mumbling something out of your breath. It's just <laughs> it's <laughs> some of my cheeks are moving. <laughs> yeah.